I have these friends, Dan and Sheila. I actually they're podcast hosts. Welcome to Profiling Criminal Minds. I'm Dan. And I'm Dr. Redmond. And we're here for week two of five of uh those who kill. I mean, <laughs> I would be so depressed by the end of this show. I don't know if we're gonna want to do a recap week. <laughs> I don't think so much. <laughs> Not if it keeps going the way it's going, so, and yeah. I suspect it will. It will, yeah. Uh, so anyway, I was completely wrong, and you were completely right, just for the record. Um, I Just because of all the talk about foster kids in that first episode, I did misjudge. He is their, The judge is their stepfather. Yeah. Oh, and Ka- uh, Kathy Baker plays her mother. I as know, a woman that who was... is completely checked out. Yeah, uh, I know, and eh? by the way, great use of mirroring by 100% uh, comparing Kathy Baker to the monstrous foster mother who raised the victim. Yep. Whoa. I know it was some. Um, yeah, no, I mean, th- they did uh, like I I can't complain about. There's nothing to complain about the about, psychology of the show I know. and the structuring of this show and the mirroring. Yeah. It's the Wong brothers. I mean, the, no, yes. it's, it's uh, yeah, the, uh, Mor- no, the Morgan Morgans. brothers. It's the Morgan brothers. Yeah. Yes, they know, they know. what they're doing. They're some of the best to have ever done this job. I know. This is, I mean, this is, it was, it was great. It's very um, well done. Oh my God. But, you know, And uh, I mean, it was, I mean, things like, um, you know, when she's trying to persuade the side, the, the psychiatrist, well, he's the forensic psychologist or forensic psychiatrist. Yeah. I think he's a psychologist forensic, but, you know, and, and then she's trying to persuade him that this man, you know, killed her brother and Mm -hmm. all these other boys and this, that, and the other thing. Right. Yeah. And, and he looks at her and says, all you, you've got nothing. Yeah. You have nothing to prove this. All I see, all I see is there is one person yeah. who is exhibiting all. Every of, single. <laughs> yeah. Trait. Of, of, a, of an abused child. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, we already know that this man clearly locked her in a yeah that's where that's the lock. suggestion they have quite clearly made yeah. we just need to know the details of that to go a little farther yeah so Oof. you know what we were talking about at the first two with with everything from you know <laughs> prodigal son on down yep this show is is digging the well all of them and doing a wonderful job mm-hmm. do not under you know, don't think that we don't like it. Appreciate the show. <laughs> we do. Understand. It's just real hard to watch. Oh, my. we understand what oh. it's doing. We think it's doing a great job of what it's doing, but it's like it is so. Oh my god, it's unrelenting. Oh, this this. If you thought American, episode? like if you thought American, um, uh, touching evil could be unrelenting. Oh, damn. This is, a, a, oh, this was, and right to the end where that friggin' rapist is just sitting there on the step. Yep. You yeah. know, and nothing, nothing was yeah. going to be, and it was, I did not see it coming. Who forgot that any of this happened? Yeah. And that's the really horrific part. This man, like, uh, there was drama, I'm sure, at the time. But like they said, he was never charged with anything. Yeah. Right? He was never charged. No. Her parents just wanted to keep it quiet. Yeah. Right? You know, and so she has a baby at 13. 13. 13. That was the one weird thing is somebody said, but... I don't know who it was. Oh yeah, I guess it was it was our Chloe Chloe Sevigny's character, yeah. right? Who makes this comment? Well, isn't thirteen a little young to have a baby? That can't possibly be. And I'm going, <laughs> I know. Oh. Okay, you're living in denial too, eh? Apparently. 
Wow. Yeah. yeah I know. So, I mean, this was just, and it was just so horrible. I mean, when yeah. we start off, it is, of course, they found the drowned body. Yeah. Right. And that's, and everything is finding out about the drowned body. Mm-hmm. And we do. And it is horrible. Yeah. It is just horrible. By the time we get to the second episode, you've got some inkling that there's something going on. But, oh, my God, when you finally find out yeah, what was going on. And you just, it just heartbreaking. Yeah. Just heartbreaking. Well, you've got the... Um, uh, <laughs> oh, I you thought it was bad. Like, so they go to the foster home he's from. They go to the foster yeah. home he was from. And the foster mm-hmm. home had been shut down two years ago. Because, A, uh, everybody was showing up with cigarette burns on their arms. And, B, a 14-year-old girl turned up pregnant and refused to say who the father was. Oh. Well, the... Well, the 13 year old girl no, who four, was. No, no, Yeah, there was is, a 14 year old girl. Yeah, no, we girl. never meet yeah. her. That's just one no, of the victims right. of the this victims. other foster home. Of this yeah. other foster home where her son yeah. was raised. Right? Yeah. And, and you, you really are wondering whether or not is one of the women in that home, right? That is doing this. Or, I know. That's the first or thing you earlier. want. Earlier. Yeah. yeah. But then, but we've already met the killer. Right. And the killer yes. goes to his funeral. Mm-hmm. We see her there and we have no idea the connection or why. But no, why? this 14 year old girl who's pregnant who gets mentioned in the first episode, that's your big clue. Yeah. But, but you, you wouldn't even think. No, you like, don't. It, bre- is... it breezes right by. That's my point. That's yeah. how well the show is structured. Yeah. It just breezes right by it. And, and then you're, but you see this woman, but you don't know. Who, why she's there? Is she there for the, the, the boy? Is she there because of the woman that was killed? Yeah. You know, this is this. That's the woman's funeral. But she's yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. And we know, and we've seen her that we've seen that she's the killer. We know that she's the killer. We saw her in the alley holding her murder weapon about to kill somebody who sneaked up on her. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like, we know what's going on. <laughs> like, we know she's the killer. We just don't know why is she there yeah. at the funeral, right? Yeah, why she's at the funeral. Why she's the killer. Yeah. Like, none of it is making much Any sense, sense whatsoever. Sense. Yeah. Right? And I think that they do a brilliant job of oh. slowly getting you to understand. Oh, hey, we neglected to mention that the cop boss is yeah. the profiler who went nuts on Millennium. That Frank said couldn't join the group because he couldn't handle it from the first season. Same actor. Oh, really? Yeah. Just, just, I just noticed it this week. Oh, yeah, same geez. actor. Yeah. yeah. Just, just worth, worth pointing out. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, anyway, no. but he, you know, this case, he's the boss. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's the boss now. Exactly. But he doesn't really go down for that profiling stuff here, even Mm-mm. though he's the boss. Uh, and speaking of, uh, the other cop has his own theory of the crime. <laughs> yeah, well. His you own, know. absolutely, prosaic. yes. His own uh, pr- completely, you know, prosaic the- area of the crime, which is that this guy mugged the woman and was so guilt-ridden about what he did, he jumped Made into the, the, jumped off of the bridge himself and just committed suicide after, as we say, Taking off his clothes and neatly folding them. Yeah. <laughs> no. And like all of this stuff, I mean, what happens is, is that initially though, remember that they don't find the clothes no, initially. They don't find the clothes initially. And so when Chloe Sevigny and our forensic psychiatrist, psychologist goes James looking Darcy. around, they find them in the bushes. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, James Darcy has gone out to try and understand, uh, he wants to prove. So he just swims out into the river where it went down to try and get into the head of who would throw somebody in there. And he's like, there are not enough 
rocks down there to do what happened to this guy's head. Like, yeah. we, we profile, pro, you know, it's like, we've already seen the impact that, uh, that, that telescoping baton can do to somebody. Right. Yep. And this is no different. Right. Yeah. Like, like, he's like, it's the same wounds. It's the same killer. But the cops just wanted to be easy. The cops just wanted to go away. Well, yeah, and, and up until they find the clothes folded yeah. neatly. And yeah. as they say, who commits suicide and folds their clothes neatly before? Yeah. You know? That's just not what you do. <laughs> and they start, I mean, it, it it is a very nice evolution. Yeah, and because they find the clothes folded there, they realize he didn't go off the bridge at all. He was no. placed in the water. Yeah. And that is what makes James Darcy sure that it's a woman because men dig holes, women drop bodies in water. And it was very, yeah. And it was very interesting too, you know, that, that he's with his wife and they're looking at the ultrasound of the new baby. Yeah. And, and it sounds, of course, well, the, the amniotic fluid fluid sounds like water. And that's when he kind of makes the connection. Yeah. It has to have been a woman who did Mm -hmm. this. Yeah. And that's why he goes and wades in the river. Yeah. So why does a woman do this and who is this? And, you know, the other woman, as we find out, was just collateral damage. Yeah. She just witnessed it. She witnessed it and it was collateral damage. Yeah. And what we don't find out until the second episode is that this woman was so enraged that that's why she did it. I mean, and oh my God. So well, you get. Okay. So we'll, we'll get there in a second. Yeah, but it's, it's worth noting that, like, oh but it's like God. they really did the profiling watch so that it's like yeah. she was so angry at this woman that that's why the woman was thrown in a dumpster and he was treated so respectfully. Mm -hmm. Because he was the important victim in this, too, but not because he was, quote unquote, the target of anything. Uh, Right. Uh, But can I just to so (laughs) casually drop in the episode that this monstrous family, right, who who runs the foster house. Yes. Is that they are so monstrous that they bred attack dogs. Mm hmm. And then found out there was more money in alligators. So now they're chopping up all the attack dogs to feel, feed to the alligators. <sighs> that happens in this episode. I, I mean, know. and they don't say it out loud, but that's what happens in this episode. And it's all right there in front of you. And I'm like, how did you think this was going to stay on television? Yeah, no, that's, I get, we said this after the first two episodes and now we're just going, but it's Do like, you understand? <laughs> like, I, you know what I want to say? What is wrong with the people of Sweden that they allowed there to be four seasons of this? Yeah, well, they've changed things in the four seasons. I'm, uh, I'm uh, hoping. Yeah, like, Jesus. I don't know. I haven't seen it's it. Like, but... As you say, even the original was only on for one season. Yeah. It's not like it was a, the biggest hit in the history of Denmark or something like that. Oh, it, was it was a one-season show. You and know? it was noir. This is as noir as it gets. <laughs> it was just, you know, and you, you're you watching, like, and Chloe, when they go to see this family, they've had 10 children. Yep. The woman lets her in because they want their children back. I know. She wants to keep having the kids back because that's the only way she defines herself. And she, as the, having these kids, right? And there's her, her actual monstrous son and her actual monstrous husband. And then she thinks of herself as a mother, so she just always wants kids around because it's the only thing she does. And she turns a blind eye to all the horrible things that are happening to these kids because of these two horrible men because yeah. all because that's, you know, who keeps things organized and who she has to obey. And j- it's horrific. It is just a horrific. Yeah. You know, and then the, oh, 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 and then the thing, oh. And then, okay, in that first episode, because, you know, as the forensic psychologist says, because they, all of these, they finally identify yeah. who this man is yeah. that has been beaten and then put into the river. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and they go and see her, her father to try and find out his, yeah, the record. 
they to look at the record. So the stepfather pulls out the record and he's, he's had it because she's asked. So he obviously went and had his yeah. secretary pull the, pull the file because he's got the file under his well, desk. That, and that's now. the interesting thing yeah. because he can't like, and it shows how well he knows her and how he's willing to help her. Well, he's not allowed to because all this man had to do was look at the file realize he can't legally show it to her, right? Yeah. And send it back. But no, he leaves the file with all of the information she needs sitting open on his desk. Yes. Specifically so <clears throat> she can illegally get the information she needs. Yep. So he's helping her in this. Oh, yeah, this is this is what is I don't know where this show is going. Going. This is my point. It's so weird. Because, yeah. and in the second episode, he just tells her, yes, I'm helping you with this, but there are limits to what I can do. Yeah. You know? It's, and I'm just, it was just, you know, it was, I mean, how they weave all of this together is yeah. so good. You know, and you're, you just, uh, I, because they can't figure out. They figured out that it's probably a woman who's done this, but none of it is making sense. No. And it isn't as you're watching it. You're trying to figure out what all Why? of this is. Why would it They bring be? you along with them. Every piece of that because investigation. I, did I, no did one I would see this coming. Out? No one saw this no. coming. I did not figure this out. Like when you get to the last 15 minutes, you know what's going to happen in the last 15 minutes. Well, because, they get, okay. The, the, what do you call it? The, the, a woman comes by this lady's house and says that the guy was asking about her. And she's like, come in for tea and murders the woman. Well, yeah, she murders the woman because like, but you don't know why she murders the woman. No, we have woman. no idea why. Why she murders this woman. Yeah. And you're just in a state of kind of shock. Yep. And, and then you, and you know, so. And by the way, pointedly. Murders her with a vicious attack dog. Now, it's not one of the vicious attack dogs from the house, but it's provide, it's pairing, you know, what yeah. was going on at that horrible foster home with this woman's life. And yeah. that's not accidental. Oh, no, no. First of all, she hits her with the frying pan, yep. the cast iron frying pan. So mm -hmm. she's, she might have already been dead from that. No, she wasn't dead. She, she screams the dog, yeah. when the dog attacks her. That's you know, right. She's not yeah. dead from that. I forgot. The show that. is way too bleak to let her just be killed by a frying pan. No. It's like you don't know the horrific show, those who kill at all. No, if you think they would let true. someone get away with being killed just by a frying, frying pan. Frying pan. <laughs> no, so this, so this woman, and then she just chops her up, and it's just and horror. buries just, her in the backyard. And we have that, we have that visual of the husband, like this mm -hmm. woman's husband chopping up the dogs. Yeah, right. Ex earlier, in the exactly. Earlier, providing right? so this perfect one-to-one -one comparison between her and the monstrous parents. Yeah, and it's who, just like yeah, and, and she, then. You oh. see the killer. Like the thing is, we haven't talked in the first episode. You see the, you see this woman. You don't know why the hell you're watching this woman. Yeah. She's, she's working in a, she's a nurse. in a care home, long term yeah. care home. And she's taking care of care, t taking care of this woman. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, she's, she's doing, um, her nails and yeah. talking to her and saying, I've done something horrible. And, and because the woman has Alzheimer's. Yeah. She can't and share. She can't. So she's talking to her and she says, I've done something horrible. And the problem is, is I'm going to do more because they've all got to pay. Yeah. And we don't know what they've all got to pay for. But we have a really good idea because a minute a man comes in and touches her. Yes. She, and she absolutely just freaks, freaks out on her because she is hyper alert. Yeah. Right. She is hyper alert in the way that abuse victims quite understandably are. Yeah. And when they finally get to her home, because they do finally track this woman. Well, no, but I mean, we had already seen when she let the woman in to murder her that she has six locks on her door. Yeah. Yeah. Six deadbolts. Yep. 
Like, she's yeah. got this vicious dog. She's that got has this been monster trained. dog, right? To but protect again, her. Uh, the irony would be that what if that monster dog came, was bred by the horrific family that was taking care of the victim? Yeah, well, we I mean, don't... the thing is, that would be, that would be too cute. Yes, and we don't, and no, we're not we have, going no, for no, cute. No, no, here. no, but I'm just saying, <laughs> but given the irony <laughs> with that the episode, that it, this is all built around, yeah. right? I wouldn't be surprised if that was in the Morgan brothers' head. Yeah. That she and actually, in a, because of how much of this is built around this horrible confluence that yeah. like in their head, she could have bought a uh, bought. Oh my God. Purchased, purchased this dog from the very people who were raising, you know, who were raising her abused son. Like, uh, no, it is I mean, just you're, you're too right. Much. That that would be too much. And if that was in their heads, they were smart enough to leave it out of the episode. But the fact that they were raising attack dogs that they then butchered and fed to, uh, crocodiles, because there's always yeah. something more vicious out there. I don't think that's an accident. No. You know? And yeah. And what happened? You know, and so, and then we get, so how do they find this woman? Well, it turns out that we see the scene with with our forensic psychologist and his wife and their son comes in yeah then he's talking with his son you know he's at the desk and he sort of hides and he goes away and then the kid takes these pictures yeah you know that he sees you know of this this kid and he puts you know he to share you them know, with his friends he's going to share them with his friends well of course mama sees what did you pick up yeah. And so they say him and they sit down and they have a conversation with him and they say, look, this is disrespectful. Yeah. Would you want other people to see you like this after you were dead? Yeah. You know, and he talked to them and they were explaining about the, they apparently explained about the folded clothes. And he said, well, just like mom does my special clothes. And she says, no, I fold all your clothes. He says, no, you fold my special clothes. A certain way. A certain way and better. Yeah. And then the forensic psychologist goes, oh, my God, a mother. Yeah. That's the only person and, who would take care of a body this carefully. Okay. And then we switch. Like, it's really nice because then we switch back to our murderess. Yeah. Who has gone back to work. Like, she's in the house. She leaves the door open. She lets the dog basically could have the come run of the place and go, yeah and she leaves the door and she says she said i you know she's basically we know she's going out to commit well, she, suicide in the morning in the morning she says that this is going to be her last breakfast this is going to be her, her daily last breakfast. prayer she says. so she goes back to the care home mm -hmm. right and she's in the care home and she wants to talk to the woman because she says you're the only one who's ever been nice to me yeah and the woman is complaining about this this one guy who constantly is constantly hitting hits the his, buzzer. Yeah. his buzzer thing, right? For whatever reason. Of course, he too has probably got Alzheimer's or some other oh, yeah. form of dementia. And, but she can't sleep because of it. But she can't sleep because of it. And she says, but she's always, you know, been nice to me. You've always been nice to me. And she talks to her. And, you know, says, um, and she was going to go away. And she said, well, where are you going? And she says, I'm going to go join my son. Then it starts to click. Yeah. Don't tell me that that boy was her son. Well, no, no. We At this point, we already know because there's one thing you've stepped over. Okay. Right? Which is they track down his friend from the foster oh, home. Oh, yes, his friend. They track down his friend from the foster, foster home because the key element that we've been dealing with is... James Darcy went to the hiding place that the kid had in the foster yes. home, which is sitting in this container and yeah. staring at a picture and he that he taped to the ceiling and he tore down the picture and only the corner of the picture is left. And it's this weird blue background. Now, uh, the heartbreak when you realize what that blue background was, I'm tearing up right now thinking about I it. I know. Because that's how great this episode is. Um. 
Oh my god. Uh, yeah, I'm tearing up. It's so good. This episode of television. And so they track down the friend and they arrest the friend because he runs from the cops because he's got a criminal record. And again, the cops are just like, let's put it to bed. The friend killed him. Done. Can we all just please go home now? Because that's all cops ever want. They just want to go home at the end of the day. Right? Yeah. They don't actually care about solving this stuff. They just want something they can put in their file and then go home and collect their $138,000 a year. (laughs) Or whatever. Or some obscene (laughs) amount of money that these people are making for not doing their job. But anyway, uh, we don't like cops on this show, by the way. In case you didn't notice, (laughs) we're not fans of cops. No, it's just, I was watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and it's like, you have characters talking about their money problems, and it's like, hey, I know you want these characters to seem relatable, but is nobody going to mention that all of these people make $160,000 a year? (laughs) And so their money problems aren't super relatable? (laughs) Anyway, sorry. They're part of a yes. union that makes okay. it so they can never lose, they can never lose their pension. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is, no. uh, they get the guy in to interview him. And yes, they talk, that's and, right. and he assumes they're arresting him for killing his friend. And he exp- and, you know, they managed to finally get to what they were doing. They were, cause they were gonna do the same thing. Like, and it had gone so badly for him, but it hadn't, it hadn't changed Got- the mind of his friend. His friend decided he still wants to he track to down go his mother. It. And what, and again, because the thing they had been doing was tracking down their birth mothers. Yes, tracking down their birth. And then that was, that's when we oh. get to the 13 year old, right? Yes, because they find Giving the birth. picture, right? They yeah. show him the pictures of everybody who was at the funeral. And he's like, that's her. And yeah. he had been following her and trying to work up the courage to talk to her. Yeah. And so, and that's, and so he had finally decided he was going to talk to her. Yeah. And he was going to meet her in the alley and explain he well, was... Well, because he, he went and talked to her out, outside the AA meeting that she was at. Yes. Quite understandably. You know, he thought this was a safe place to approach her, right? And yeah. she, being a hyper-vigilant person who had been brutally raped at least once, not going to be surprised if there was more than one sexual assault in her life. Not going to be surprised for a second if that was going on. Yeah, because the f- parents made her keep the baby. Yeah. Well, and I mean, as we find out, right? And this is the part that gets to me. Hid her. She yeah. was homeschooled for the year she was pregnant. Yep. They hid it and they made her give it away. So she had no life for that year. Her life was entirely devoted to this baby. Right? Yeah. That they hid and didn't tell anybody about it and wouldn't let her tell anybody. And she was allowed to have no contact. The baby was taken away immediately. I'm tearing up already thinking about it. Because what was the one thing she was allowed to do? Give her son a picture of her. And so after she hit this guy and, you know, you know, smashed him doing a life ending brain injury, he tried to communicate that he was her son. Yeah. And that's why he wrote, I am in blood. Yeah. And she searched his body and, and found she found the... her 13 year old school photo. Yeah. The one thing she had been allowed to give to this baby that was being taken away from her forever. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> this show! It's just... What are you doing to me? <laughs> it was, and you're doing, you want, you, I, I don't know if you watched it in the middle of the night, but that would have been even worse. <laughs> I, I watched it Sunday afternoon. I, if I'd been watching oh this. Oh my the God. Of, I, I, I it's like this show's hitting you with a truck. Oh, it was just so horrible. It was, and, it was just a nightmare. And the, yeah. And the funny thing is, is here is this kid dressed. He'd bought in a new suit and exactly. everything to meet his mother. And, and of course, the the one thing that we don't talk about. I tricked about, you into saying Botten, so it's not you know I. No, I mean, it's, it's not just you. It's not just yeah. you, but I mean it's my fault. Okay. Anyway. Okay. He, what he happens? Purchased right. A new suit. He. Yeah. Yes, he bought his. Yeah. A new suit and everything, but yeah. what we don't never ever touches on, but it's there as well, is that, of course, her son is black. Yeah. 
Exactly. Right? And, of course, the man who raped her and is this child's father Mm -hmm. was black. Yep. And I hope to God that she killed the mother. I know. We're never told, but I really... I really hope he sh- she shot that woman. Well, she she did shoot at her. We just don't know whether if she actually she, yeah. killed the mother. Yeah. Because the mother is still de- denying because the mother recognized her when she goes to the when family home. When she goes home. to the ho- family home looking for him. Because she remembers exactly where it happened. She goes yeah. straight there. That's we get it's the never story. been out of her head. That he invited her back for Nintendo. And the minute the mother left to go out and do something, he raped her. Yep. Right, and the mother knows it's true. Knows it's true, and didn't do a thing about it. Yeah, and and so therefore she gives, and so therefore she's going to be hyper hyper vigilant around any black man. Black guy sneaks up on her in alley. She's going to be extra hyper vigilant. And so she, and that's hits what him makes and... it this extra level of tragedy. Yeah, and that she killed her son, and it just, just that, now I'm once. tearing up. I know. I'm just, I'm just like, oh God, help. Me. And all he wanted his whole life was to meet his mother. And he did. It was, just, it, it was just, oh, it was so horrible. Yeah. By the way, I mean, obviously this is not something to practically do, and there's no reason he wouldn't have known to do this. This is the kind of thing you want to, if if you're looking for your birth parents, don't, don't surprise them with it. You're probably not going to get brained with a baton, but... Yeah. Send them a letter send them first. Into, send them a letter first. It's okay. Send them a letter. And if you don't hear back from the letter, send a third party to find out what's going on. Yeah, because the thing is, is that the nursing care home where she worked yeah. is near the AA meeting. Yeah. Right? And so, you know, it, it is just, that's how, too how they're, they're putting, they put, they all, put of all of these pieces together. together. It is, it is so well done. And when you are whacked over the head with this, because she is going to go and the and, final is she wants to kill the and guy. When she kills this woman, you're like, is she trying to get away with it? Like she no, can't possibly no, no. get away with it. And the answer is no. And then she, she kills walks the neighbor the yeah. because she can't handle anyone knowing what she did. Not because she's trying to get away with it and covering it up, because she can't deal with the guilt of this woman knowing what she did. And that's so horrific, because it's it's so monstrous what she did. Oh, and it's a single act of violence echoing out yeah. all of this time. Like, the only real villain here is that rapist. Yeah. And the he only... And he doesn't remember it happened. I don't have a son. No, he doesn't even... I'm, he, I'm yeah. sure if she explained to him the thing, he wouldn't even remember doing it. Yeah. That's the that's the dark heart at all of this. That, like, this defining, monstrous act that destroyed this woman's life and her son's life, right? And killed all of these other people because she, she kills the other old man with Alzheimer's. Because oh, he, yes, he, he won't stop hitting the thing. Because he won't stop hitting the thing. And, and, he, well, and he grabs her. And he grabs he at her. Which, no, at her you don't breast. grab at her. Yeah, he grabbed at her breast. Like, no. Obviously, said, oh, I'm not I'm he, not sad that he's, you know. Mm. Dead. I'm not sad that he's dead, but oh. But that's when they start following her because they yeah. they realize that the nursing home is next Just to. Because right they still don't the know who she is. No. And so they find out, they realize that the nursing home is close to the alley yeah, where... They know about the 13-year-old being assaulted. Yeah. Right? They, uh, and right. they want to know who the the The, the father, father was because that's the only... Because they find out who she is, but they don't know who the father... Uh, but as you say, she's when they get there, she's abandoned her house. She's mm-hmm. never coming back. The plan is to kill the father and then kill herself. Yeah. Right. She's never coming back. She left the let the dog have the run of the place, and it runs to attack her. And Chloe Sevigny does the smart thing, which is she yells at the dog and tells it to sit. Because spoiler alert, attack dogs, it works on a surprisingly large amount of them to just be ordered because their entire life has spent just being ordered. Yeah. Like even if the attack dog's coming after you, 
You can just tell it to sit, and there's actually a good chance it'll do it. If you're authoritative with a dog and use that tone of voice, and a dog will respond to it because their whole and life is a trained. female voice. Yes, that also helped. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it's the female voice. So it sits, she grabs it, and ties and just and tie, and just handcuffs it, it to the to the chain link fence. Yeah. yeah, and so and so they have to go to the group home, right? Uh, and where she was. And find in their records there, right, who the guy was, uh, right, that who the guy was. And he's like, you got to get a court order. And she quite obviously saying, someone's going to die today if you don't (laughs) tell me who this rapist was. And James Darcy's like, okay, well, you can't do with a cop, uh, tell a cop because it's against law. I'm not a cop, so I'm just going to steal the information. (laughs) There you go. I've solved your moral dilemma, you ridiculous person. Oh my god, this episode. It never lets up. And so she tries to shoot the guy, and the one guy we'd be happy to see dead, she fails to kill because, God forbid. And then she runs onto a bridge and she's surrounded by the cops, and well, of course she's going to kill herself. She's going to be with her son. Yeah. And they're horrified by it. She's horrified by it. And James Darcy is horrified by it. But at the same time, best possible ending for this woman. Yeah. Because what's, what's the other option? What's the other option? Spend the yeah. rest of her life in jail thinking no, about shit. how she killed oh. her son. Yeah. I, I'm not pro-suicide. But nope. you gotta you got to give this woman the right to take herself out if need be. Yeah. And so oh. she tries to kill herself with the gun and she's of course out of bullets. spent all her bullets yeah. on trying, trying to, to kill, the, kill the, the rapist. The rapist. Yeah. Yeah. Her rapist. And oh, it was God. just It's unrelenting. It's unrelenting. And the one thing we don't yeah, well, no, it's true. We do find out what triggers it all. Like yep. it is all explained. It's by all her. laid out perfectly. There yeah, is you have no even, questions left at the end of this she, episode. Even killed that woman because that woman yeah. knew. Yeah. I think that woman knew it was her her son that was looking for or her, or at least and yeah. didn't tell her. Yeah, didn't tell her. Yeah, I think she knew. Yeah, and the point is, this woman can't have anyone knowing that she killed her son. Like it's too well, shameful and too horrific. Yeah, it's not only not only that. But yes, if well, she had told she her, no. Yeah, if she had, that, co- that, but and the horror that if this woman had come to her right away, yeah, all of this could have been avoided. That this guy yeah. was asking around, all of this could have been avoided. Yeah, the and horror so, of it. And as James yeah. Darcy said, like if like if he had never gone looking for his mother. Right, a completely natural thing to do. This woman would have just left out the rest of her uh, because he's talking about the psychology. He wants to understand the psychology of killers. This woman, she was monstrously. She did deal with monstrous abuse because not only is there the sexual assault, but there's the parents who were obviously horrific to her. Yeah. Before and after the, I mean, she's referring to this. This woman with Alzheimer's who can't remember her from minute to minute as the closest thing she's ever had to a mother. Yeah. Like, this woman had a miserable life. There was no good, there was nothing good in her life. Yeah. But she never would have become a serial killer. Nope. Had this, she never would have started killing people if this impossible, bad bit of luck hadn't happened. And... That so horrifies James Darcy that he destroys uh, the watch he was working on. It's a clock, yeah, that he's working on. clock, what does it matter? The point is, because, and again, the metaphor is very clear, a watch is, the time is made to happen by a complex set of interlocking elements. Yep. And unless the, unless, like, and unless all of these interlocking elements come together exactly right, the clock doesn't work, and the clock isn't a clock. And in the same way, think of all of the little elements that had to come together for that woman to get beaten to to death, this complete bystander, 
to have yeah. to get beaten to death in that alley outside of an AA meeting. Yeah. Right. It was all of the just, events. Oh, it, it was just. You know, and then, of course, what we there, and then we have to, we have to bring up one other thing because it relates to the clocks. Yeah. Because he tells his son, I can take apart a clock and I can't, you can see and all I can the parts put it of it back together and know exactly and, how it works. And you can't do that with people. You Without can't just them. take them all apart and then put them back together again. Yeah. Without. You don't know the damage you're going to do. Well, the person, and, course, and as he says, if I did that to a person, you know, they wouldn't work anymore. Yeah. Now, here's the problem is that that refers to some extent, I think, not to our, our woman yeah. that, that murdered her son, no. but it refers to Chloe. Oh, because completely. he has. Because we saw her after she comes out, she has to meet with her father. Yeah. And after she comes out, Right? She goes into the bathroom. She says she has to go. And she cuts herself. Yep. So, and we all know, if we know anything about mm -hmm. cutting yourself, this is a, a trauma response, response. To abuse. A trauma response. Yeah. So, she can't... You cause pain. The... You cause pain to yourself. So, you're the one in control of the pain that got caused to you. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the emotional pain is such that if you give yourself physical pain, you can now focus on that. You can focus on the physical pain. And you're pain. the one who caused the physical pain, so you're in control. And you can fix it. Yeah, and you can fix it. You made it happen. And that's yeah. the thing. If you feel out of control of everything else in your life, taking control of your body. It's why she cuts herself. It's why she calls, you know, the guy again to have sex in a closet. Yep. Because she needs to be the one in control. Control. Yep. Again, how could there be? How could there have been a second season of this? <laughs> there, but, how is she going to be alive at the end of this season? Like we, we used to talk about, um, we used to talk about the inside, right? I know. We, could, we could see a second season for the inside, well, and because we because it's got that cat whole cast. Yeah, upset you here. Know? You're just watching, and the you're watching the funny, this woman spiral. Yeah, and you're watching the. And and he doesn't know what's kind of triggered that yet. But no. we're watching the forensic psychiatrist. The wife is afraid. As she says to him at one point, do you want me to tell you to continue or to quit? Yeah. And he just kind of looks at her, right? And yeah. so she knows it's continue. Yeah. And so she lets it go. Yeah. Um, that he's And he does appear to have these emotional responses like breaking down the clock. Yeah. But he is in control of this in terms of his own peculiar way of doing oh yeah of doing this but he's so afraid his only fear is that he will make a mistake again and like he did killed. when he worked for the the boss we still don't know the details of that case yet no but it was um it it is creating these characters the story was We've had four episodes now, and yeah. you're going still. It gets even more impossible to understand. I don't even know how well this would have done on on uh, any kind of a cable. Full cable. I mean, it was it was uh, partial yeah. cable, but you know, it's not yeah. like HBO. No. No, this still, would... this still had commercials. And by the way, imagine taking this show <gasps> and going to an advertiser and saying, we would like you to advertise on our TV show. Who would advertise on this? Who? Didn't see it when it was on. I know. I'm <laughs> very curious if someone has like a recording of a full broadcast of this so we can see <laughs> what kind of ads are you going to after the revealed that a 13-year-old child was raped and had a baby that she then killed 20 yeah. years later. <laughs> to, what, what ad? What truck is then coming up and saying, drive our truck after that plot reveal? <laughs> oh my God, this it was, it was. Oh, and, oh, and, um, oh, and just one bit of, <laughs> it didn't fit into the main episode, but she goes, um, she goes to her dad's, uh, hockey league that she used <gasps> to help out with. He runs, yes. a pee he coaches a peewee hockey league, right? Yep. 
Uh, and so she goes there trying to find a team roster so she can see if any of the boys in the Pee Wee hockey team disappeared because she can't identify any of his victims. She knows he has victims, but she doesn't know their names. And she's like, so I'm going to find out, find every young boy he had access to, and I'm going to try and track down all of them to see if any of them disappeared. And that's just a, that's just a thing that happens in passing. Um, it's not important to the plot of this episode and it doesn't tie in because it's part of the overarching, f- uh, plot with her father. But that is, yeah. it's worth mentioning and, that that does happen. Yes. And of course she runs into, and she runs into a guy who clearly wasn't abused by the father whose yeah. sons are, whose son is now in, in the, the same Bantam League. He was in the Bantam League because he's the same age as Chloe and her brother. Yeah. You know, and, and the scene in the church with her mother and her, you know, and the mother saying, talking about Hoping that their brother will come back to her. Oh, yes. He's going to come back. She lights a candle for him every time. Yeah. And she's, and she's looking at the picture and she says, do you think Mary was so unhappy? I mean, we know that, but did she cry and did she weep? Like, like, she knew where her her son son was. That's the thing. I know. Oh. That's such a good scene. Yeah, it is. It's ah. it's this weird way, uh, and you know, and and telling Chloe that the best thing she ever did for her children was to marry this judge because yep. they had Davison. no money, and yep. it was he gave uh, and there gave was him a life and station and a place in society. And, and what did you trade just, for that? Yeah. And that's the question. What did she trade for that? And we're going to find out oh, by, yeah. the, end, by the end of the season. episodes for sure, because yeah. we can watch just Chloe spiraling. Yep. Like but there's just... no way they don't resolve this by the end of the season. Oh, no, no. Th- there's no, no way. Like, because again, it's not a show if they don't resolve this by the end of the season. I know. And I have a feeling that the Danish show may have been only like one of these by design, 10 yeah. episode by design. It's enti- I would not be surprised at all if that were the case. Yeah. So they had to change certain things. But when anyway, well, decide you know what? the Swedes we're, decided I think at to this do point, it. We're probably going to watch the Danish show, show so we can stop. If we can find it. Yeah. I, it's not going to be hard to find. It stars one of the Mickelson brothers and it was made in the present day. It's not going to yeah. be hard to track down. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, the, the question is, can we stand another? Exactly. Like, I don't know if we're going to do it week by week. We might just watch the whole thing over six months and then talk about it when we can emotionally process it. Because this is very oh. difficult to process. I think, I think it may have had something to do with my mood last night. Yeah. <laughs> just like, you no, know, pro- processing Whoa. the horror that was this show. I know. And I I am not going to say that there was anything that I can complain about it in all no. fit together. These like are the friggin clock. Perfectly made. Well, yeah, like a clock. There you go. Uh uh but no, these are perfectly made episodes of television. Like oh. they, they just are. It is it is flawless. There's nothing left hanging nope. by the end of this. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are the things that are going to be continuing, but that's not, but the main plot of these two of episodes. Of these two episodes, it's, it's airtight. Yeah. It really is And I'm is so glad. Airtight. God, can you imagine if we had set ourselves at task and this was two and like, this was the odds because we're doing one and two and then two and then three and four. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. Oh, we would have probably had to watch another episode. Right away. I know. Because uh, almost certainly, yes. But it does it and it oh. ends and all of the and the, at the same time as the horror of all of this, at least all of the people who were responsible for her horror. Well, most of the people. Most of the pe- except for the rapist. Yeah, the person who caused and again, it's the show's worldview that yeah. the worst man doesn't suffer. Yeah, he's the one that that, He's that, the one that caused. He is the the all first of this cog set in motion that set all of this in motion. Yeah, and he couldn't care less. And he doesn't. Again, I would argue that the message of that scene is he doesn't even remember. Yeah. Who is this nut? Yeah, nut John? Who is this nut wa- talking to me? Because he doesn't yet know that his mother potentially is dead. Exactly, and hopefully is dead. <laughs> yes, as we're saying. Because and and if this sounds too harsh, go watch the go show. Go watch the show. 
and then te- you will then tell us we're being harsh. Yeah. Oh given, my god. Given that that the end result of it is that this woman killed her own son. Yep. Accidentally. Completely accidentally. Oh my god. Ah, oh, it that was, was a just, rough one. Yeah, it was. All right, There's, so I, I'm that's gonna. It. I'm not gonna blow your mind. Uh, well, no, I do have to tell you one thing. Oh. You know what's next okay. week, don't you? Do Do you know what's next week? No. It's the, it's the Darren Morgan episode. Oh, oh yes, okay. Darren Morgan wrote one episode of this show. Yeah. And it's next week. Oh. Yep. Yeah. So that's going to be. Yes. I mean, I we're going to watch the episode, and there is this is the one time where I'm going to say, I, I'm not like, we're going to rush through the rest of this show. I'm not going to be like that. But there is a chance that we might actually, this week, uh, only do one episode next week. If the Darren Moore, because the thing is, it's him doing an episode, but all of the Darren Morgan episodes we've talked about being perfect episodes of television, the best things we've ever seen, right? They were all the result of like um what do you call it they were all the result of uh him having an entire continuity to play with of him being able to look at everything a show had ever been and attempted to do right and press see what the show was in these beautiful hours of television right i'm talking about you know, doomsday defense. I'm talking about Jose Chung's from outer space. And of course, I'm talking about somehow Satan got behind me as, as great an hour of television you'd ever seen. But somehow Satan got behind me doesn't work as the fifth episode of Millennium. <laughs> no. And that's the problem with Darren Morgan doing it. And it's like, I don't know if it's going to be good. I don't know if it's going to be bad, but I do know that Darren Morgan doing the fifth episode of a show is something we've never seen before. Yeah, well, so, it's, I... I'm not saying we will. I'm saying there is a possibility after we've both watched episode five, we're going to say maybe we just watch episode five this week and talk about episode five this week. Given that it's Darren Morgan, the possibility exists that we're going to say maybe we just watch episode five this week. Because we then, can't go back. Well, no, and then we'll come back for episode six and seven the next week. Yeah. So I'm not saying we're going to do that. I'm saying because it's Darren Morgan... Don't be surprised if we do that. Because he is like the only TV writer in history that we will just assume there's going to be two, like an hour's worth of breaking down needed to do whenever he writes an episode. Yeah. You know? Did you see the, his last episode of the X-Files? The, the lost art of forehead sweat? Well, I'm sure I did. It was part of season 17, the final episode, uh, season 17 or whatever it was, the final, the second season of the revival, and then they didn't do any more X-Files. Okay, so I haven't seen... You, no, I don't think you've seen that. No, one. I haven't seen the revival, The revival, actually. okay. You know what? After after we get done this to cheer us up, uh, maybe we watch Darren Morgan's revival episodes of the X-Files. Okay. <laughs> just, just to cheer us up after watching this. We can watch, uh, we can watch the, the, the were beast or whatever it was called. Right. Yeah. And then we'll watch the Danish version of this. And then we'll watch the lost art of, uh, forehead sweat, which is, uh, well, I can't, I can't spoil it. I cannot spoil what this episode does. No, it's, don't. it's too good to, to even risk spoiling. But yes. This was uh, Those Who Kill, a, a TV show that ripped our hearts out and then showed it to us. <laughs> the, the Mortal Kombat fatality of an episode of television that is... Holy shit. Oh my God. <laughs> the only way I can describe this show is yeah. being the Mortal Kombat fatality of television. Yeah, and you watched... And Every you wa- week, we, it oh. reaps out your show heart and shows it to you. Oh, God. Oh my God. How dare they do this to me? <laughs> but it's like seeing that blue background at the roof of the thing. That's like, why is that blue background familiar to me? Like, why does that? And then re- being like, Oh my God. It's what every frigging, you know, what every frigging school photo background backdrop looked like in the nineties. I have pictures Don't. of myself 
sitting in front of that same background. Oh, so, so impossibly brutal. It was. I, it was. There is no question. Yeah. It really was. All right. So, uh, on that note, <laughs> thanks for listening. Uh, we're going to be back next week with, uh, do you want to just go to IMDb and check what the uh, episode title is? Actually, I might have it here. Hold on. Uh, those who kill, they got titles. Oh, it's called Souvenirs. Okay. So we're oh, at no. least, oh. good. I know. Uh, this is going to go into Chloe's By the stuff. way, I guess, obviously. Um, if you want to be ready for how bleak you know the rest of this show is going to be, episode uh, five, Souvenirs. Six, Always After. Seven, A Safe Place. Eight, Insomnia. Nine, Untethered. Ten, Surrender. <laughs> oh my god. The second last episode is called Untethered. Tethered. Yeah. A dog has been let off its leash. Wonder who that will be referring to. Oh my god, this show. All right, so join us back here next week for at least souvenirs, maybe souvenirs and always after, depending on how souvenirs is. Uh, we will see you back here for that. Uh, but until then, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you want to talk about uh, how your day was ruined by episode four Sunday, drop us a line at profilingcriminalminds at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. Uh, if you are listening on an app or podcatcher, please be sure to rate and review the show. That's how new people find out about it. <sighs> We're going to be back here <laughs> next week <laughs> for more of this show that hates us. <laughs> But until then, I'll say that's right. Au revoir. And try and have a good week. I mean, we're not going to. <laughs>